Is it time to possibly start to put more attention into your spiritual path? Is there more anxiety than usual, more worry than usual? Is there more hmm, negativity than usual? Maybe more resentments or anger or rage even? More impatience? Hey, David Essel here. You're tuned in to David Essel Alive. And we do this on a regular basis, trying to give you thoughts and ideas on how to level up that life, how to go through these challenges that the world is facing. And one of the things that I know is crucial important for most individuals is their spiritual path, whether they call it a spiritual path, religious path, whatever, especially in times of need. Now, here's the quotation, in times of need. We are always in time of need, right? But there are some times that are more mm, damaging than others, tougher to move through. Have you felt in the past couple of years, like every other corner you turn around, there's a two by four across your forehead, <laughs> you know, like no matter where you turn, there's something that just isn't normal. There's something that isn't as easy as it was a number of years ago. I, you know, I go through the same stuff. And what I've seen by studying the masters over the years, some I'll mention like Yogananda, um, Paramahansa Yogananda, uh, who's one of the greatest teachers I've ever imagined and realized. As a matter of fact, I reach out to their organization, Self-Realization Fellowship in San Diego, and they're a great resource, courses, uh, spiritual mentors, etc. Uh, Ernest Holmes, oh my Lord, you know, Science of Mind, uh, just an incredible book. When I go to, when I think of Yogananda, I think of one of his greatest spiritual books that he ever wrote was Where There Is Light. So I want you to know that there's answers. Listen, I'm searching too. I go through what everyone else goes through. I go through doubt and insecurity. I go through anger at myself. I go through frustration. You know, just something like this whole social media stuff, which I'm honestly not a big fan of, can create great frustration for me, you know, and I know I'm not alone. And so what do we do when the world is insane and you turn on the news and it's one piece of BS after another? Well, first of all, we turn off the news, quite frankly. But but what do we else we do? And, and I'm going to tell you, I, I think the answer is putting more devoted time into your spiritual path. That might be hiring a mentor. That might be taking a spiritual course online. That might be taking a spiritual course or a religious course at your temple, your synagogue, your church, your spiritual center. But there's got to be action on our part. We can't just sit back and say, God, take over this for me. You know, just take this away from me. And we can, we can, of course, you know, but and from what I understand as a pastor and minister and all faiths pastor, all faith minister for a very long period of time is that from what I understand in the spiritual world, God or energy or grace, whatever you want to call it, is waiting for us to meet her halfway. Think about that. She's waiting. Her arms are open. He's waiting. His arms are open. And they're encouraging us to take another step closer to who you believe God is, to who believe your source is. They're welcoming us. And the way they get our attention is anxiety and depression and worry and overwhelm. Isn't that fascinating? Those emotions are meant to get us moving out of the norm we're in right now into something fresh, brand new. And the odds are we're not going to be able to get there by ourselves. I cannot. Some of the biggest challenges I've ever faced in my life, I could not get through on my own. I had to reach out for help regularly. And I'll be very open and vulnerable with you. I'm doing it right now. I am asking a spiritual mentor to guide me through what I'm being challenged by. I don't think there's anyone at any level that gets it. There's always another level. And when I've interviewed these most amazing monks and gurus, and I know the word guru scares people, all it stands for is healer. That's all it means. Don't let that word scare you, it's healer. But of all these Lama Surya Das is one that comes to mind, I, I wanna tell you a story. Lama Suryu Das, I met in the 90s and interviewed him multiple times. He's the highest ranking American Buddhist Lama in the world, just underneath the Dalai Lama. That's how incredible this gentleman is. And I talked to him about his spiritual training and I talked to him about his work in monasteries and I talked to him about all these things, you know, and I was expecting to hear stories of bliss. 
I really was. And there were stories of bliss. But then there was this story that really woke me up. I asked him what it was like to be in a monastery. And he shook his head and he started to laugh. And he said, David, you know, it's, uh, it's not all that we think it is. And he was laughing and I was laughing because I had been in a monastery. I'd spent some time and was very attracted to it. And, but it was only for a few days. He was there for three years. And he took a vow of silence. And he said at about the nine month mark of his first year, he was having a mental breakdown. And he didn't know where to turn. Now think about this. Someone who is about to become the highest ranking American Buddhist Lama in the world is struggling with his own mental health. You see, people at that level are no different than you and I, except for this one difference. They always have a mentor to go to. They always have a teacher above them. They always have a guru above them, a healer above them. And maybe if you're involved with a church or a spiritual center, you could go there or call them today. If you're feeling overwhelmed and anxiety like I do many times and 90% of the world does, get vulnerable, get humble. I honestly believe, even though I can't prove it, that most of our challenges with mental health and physical health can be highly alleviated if we put our time into treating our body as the temple God intended it to be. If we treated our mind as the temple that she wanted it to be. I think we need to put action into our spiritual work. And the end result will be a higher level of consciousness where what is bothering you today will be like a fly in six months, maybe even non-existent in a year. You know, Yogananda tells a story about when he was in a monastery and he was struggling deeply. You know, I have to tell you, in, in the time I spent in the monastery, there were 22 monks there and half of them had stories about quitting the monastery and then returning and quitting and returning. I mean, it was really hard for them to put so much time into prayer. They weren't used to eight, 10, 12 hours of prayer a day and they would leave the monastery and then come back. You see, and these people, when they came back, they came back and they started working under the leadership of a mentor, an aged monk who knew what it was like to experience what these younger monks were experiencing. It's all about being vulnerable asking for help. And Yogananda says, as a story that I was about to begin, that when he was struggling in the monastery, he went to his guru, his mentor, and his mentor looked at him and said, why so glum? You're in the sacred hallways of God. And that woke Yogananda up. And he said that one statement resonated so deeply that the rest of the time in his monastery was pure joy. You see, these spiritual teachings have immense power if we're willing, open to take them into our heart and soul and practice them on a daily basis. You know, I personally put in between an hour to two hours a day in my morning practice, spiritual practice, prior to getting out of bed. And I still struggle. And that's an hour and a half a day. Does that mean that you have to put an hour and a half a day in or three hours a day? No. But I can't imagine what my life would be like if I didn't put that hour and a half in. If I still have anxiety at times and frustration at times and I'm putting an hour and a half in, it would be times a million if I wasn't putting that time in every morning. And I want to make this important point. It's not necessary for you to do anything that I do or anyone else. We all have our own pathway. And so, but if we find even five minutes of dedication to your source, to your God, to whoever he or she is, and then maybe we expand that every week by one minute. Well, you start today at five minutes. And in 30 days, figure the math, a minute a day. You're at 35 minutes every morning by adding one minute a day. Or maybe you grab one of the books I mentioned, 
to deepen your spiritual path and you commit to reading four pages a day, that is absolutely perfect. Times 30 is 120 pages a month, which means you'll probably go through a book about every month and a half. Can you imagine at the end of 12 months, after you've gone through seven, eight deep spiritual books and you're doing the practices, how your life can radically change? It will. Thank you so much for being with me today. If I can help you move to that next level of spiritual practice, reach out to me at talkdavid.com. Let me know if I can help you at all. And if it's not me, reach out to someone else. We all can benefit, especially during these times, with extra help. With love, I'm David Essel.